A very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to Vogan's European Outlook. It is Wednesday the 28th of September. I know there was a couple of comments made about the, the background noise in yesterday's video. Uh, I do apologise to an extent about the noise. Um, it is a bit, a bit annoying. It's not ideal, but... Um, the problem that I've got actually is that I'm either getting loaded, unloaded, I've got either fridges running or indeed I'm parked at the side of busy roads and you know, lo and behold yesterday afternoon uh, I was parked on the A1 with uh, cars and trucks rattling past. I know it's annoying but unfortunately it's sometimes the only chance that I get out of a 13 to 15 hour workday Sometimes I only get an hour's break or even less than that. And I use that, you know, well-earned rest break, if you will, to do these videos. So um, I do apologize for the noise and I know it's annoying, but it's either I, I do the video when I'm, uh, you know, I'm you know, getting loaded, unloaded or parked at the side of the road or simply I don't get the video done at all and you don't get any content. So just wanted to kind of make a wee, a wee comment about that um should be quiet enough at the moment i'm getting loaded but it's only with polystyrene fish boxes to go from glasgow back up the road again so uh, the end of another work week is very close for myself uh, but of course when it comes to the weather um you know you don't get a day off really it is all about um you know the upcoming system that will affect the pretty much all of the UK and Ireland on Friday. It looks as if we are going to see the first um you know, widespread strong to gale force winds and a spell of a couple of hours at least of heavy persistent rainfall as well. We're going to get those kind of scenes where you get these kind of sheets of rain uh, blowing down the street and whatnot uh, over the, the course of Friday. So, um, but at this moment in time, we've got an area of low pressure sitting over the North Sea. A little bit of a, a feature um, coming off the western side of that will actually uh, bring a spell of a fairly heavy and persistent rain to eastern por portions of Scotland. So from Aberdeenshire down through Tayside, Fife, the borders into Northumberland, Tyneside. Uh, and down all the way to, to Lincolnshire and whatnot, we are going to see um, some increased shower activity, if not longer spells of rain associated with this feature on that west side of the low. But it is a much weaker feature than what it was a couple of days ago. Remember, this uh, system did, uh, you know, orient itself away up uh, you know, to the east of, of central Greenland. So it's came a long way south. And, um, you know, it will continue to uh, keep things rather cool uh, over the next uh, 24 hours or so. But as that system eventually fills, what is going to happen is we uh, start to lose the winds. We still have some kind of showers coming in off the, off the North Sea, as you can see here. But it's a little bit of a, a brief re reprieve from the, the, the showers or longer spells of rain and that nagging wind coming in from a cold direction then we've got the next feature that comes in so this is off uh, this is the overview precipitation cloud temperature and, and pressure chart off the ecmwf and you can see here by three o'clock on friday morning it's moving in to the northwest and western portion of the british isles here squeezing the isobars indicate gale force winds particularly so across the coast but it will be windy um, pretty much everywhere during the course of Friday. I say two or three hours, but it actually could be longer than that that we see heavy wind-driven rain. And uh, for particularly southern portions of the UK, that is certainly going to be welcome, I would imagine. That system clears out. We still have a tight squeeze in the isobars. Notice here pressure at 970 millibars. We've got two centres, if you notice here. One that actually crosses the northern half of the British Isles, which is interesting enough. We we'll skip back actually here. You can see that uh, centre there uh, actually moving across the British Isles. Was, I think it was just yesterday or the day before I said that the centre of the low will never uh, cross over the UK, but it's actually got a, a, a secondary centre. The, the main parent centre actually stays uh, well off uh, to the north and to the west, as you can see here, the northwest. But what we've got is we've got a pressure of 1024 millibars off uh, Portugal, 
We've got a 970 millibar uh, low uh, to the north of the UK. And of course, we've got uh, a squeeze in the isobars indicating some very strong westerly winds with plenty of convective showers rattling aboard that, that westerly flow coming in off the Atlantic. Nothing particularly cold. Of course, we've got a warmer than normal Atlantic. So uh, that is going to um, be a flow that will keep things feeling reasonably fresh, if you say, rather than rather than cold and then if you notice here that as we go into the day on on, on saturday here what we've got is we've got the uh, kind of a hang back and boundary here which means that we've got uh, some fairly heavy and persistent rain that kind of persists across the southern flank of the uk so while things start to clear out and turn more showery midlands northwards it looks as if we could hold on to a uh, kind of longer spells of a uh, Fairly heavy, persistent rainfall, uh, anywhere from Devon, Cornwall, all the way uh, through Kent, possibly a little bit further north than that, uh, lingering on into the day on Saturday. So that's off the ECMWF. This is off the GFS, and uh, you can see what happens. We've got that feature riding down the eastern side of the UK over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. That eventually clears on out. We've got a brief spell of high pressure. Uh, over the British Isles and then of course we've got that frontal system wind rain followed by heavy blustery showers as you can see here and then it looks as if the GFS indicates high pressure starts the ridge in uh, during the course of Sunday and on into Monday but you notice here there's there's features that are kind of uh, still clipping uh, the particularly the west and northwest of the British Isles here so things stay reasonably unsettled if you notice here uh, yeah, generally high pressure, higher than normal pressure, uh, will affect the UK. It looks like according to the GFS, and it kind of becomes more established, I think, uh, through the course of next week. But notice here, off the ECMWF, it's a little bit different because what we've got is that system pushes through. You've got that hang back front, um, you know, kind of sitting on the southern flank of the UK. High pressure tries to build in, but you notice here areas of low pressure uh, kind of skirting the northwest of the UK. One system after another, high pressure centered over the near continent. So it, it will keep these systems uh, kind of generally west and northwest of the UK. I think always uh, England, Wales kind of fern better if you will, in terms of weather conditions. But certainly some of these areas of low pressure, by the way, pretty deep, pretty pretty tightly compact. And if the, the centres get close enough to the UK, they could bring some pretty strong winds uh, across Ireland and across particularly Western and Northern Scotland. And of course, the associated frontal system uh, kind of sweeps across the UK. So notice here, that it stays fairly unsettled with the centre of the high always staying a little bit further south as, as you can see here and then it looks as if high pressure tries its best to become a little bit more established if you will here looking at the um let's have a look at the wind speeds here um and see what the models are indicating because we are of course going to see some very strong winds with this system especially as the front moves through you can see here as we move through into the day on friday if it's going to update that is it may not actually behave itself and show what i'm wanting it to show um so i'm afraid is it going to show me well yeah you can actually still see here 120 kilometers per hour uh, over the the irish sea here across the northwest of northern ireland down the western side of scotland and england wales so we could be talking about a uh, you know 60 70 mile an hour winds associated with this system as it pushes through and then, of course, you notice here quite a sharp uh, zone here. Very strong winds here uh, of 120 kilometers per hour along that frontal system here, uh, extending down through the English Channel, as you can see here. And then, of course, uh, in the wake of that uh, frontal system, we've got some pretty strong winds uh, between the uh, low to the north and the area of high pressure to the south here. Uh, so we could see a fairly windy spell of weather you know starting tomorrow night and lasting right the way through into the day on sunday um so we'll keep our eyes certainly closely on that looking at the 
the uh, October outlook here. This is off the CFSV2 for uh, off the, the, the 500 millibar height anomalies chart. So this is the very latest run of the CFSV2 for October. And you notice here the center of high pressure is to the south of the UK. We've got um, kind of neutral heights uh, up towards Iceland. I would indicate probably a trough uh, and, and the main storm track kind of stem to the north of the British Isles. So you notice here the precipitation is actually relatively wet across the northwest, so hence low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south. So we've got driest conditions across Spain, Portugal, uh, southern and central France, as you can see here. The further north you go, the wetter the conditions are. But notice here as we go into the month of, uh, of November and on into December, it's indicating probably quite an Atlantic driven pattern. So in other words, you've got wettest conditions to the north, wet, uh, driest conditions to the south, so high pressure underneath low pressure, a fairly classic Atlantic driven setup here, if that is correct. And then of course, as you go into the month of December, same idea. It's interesting, after such a dry summer just gone, certainly the CFS V2 is indicating a turnaround to wetter than normal conditions. So it'll certainly be worth paying attention as we go forward here. So just looking at purely at the CFS V2 uh, for the next couple of months here, certainly temperature wise for the month of October, it's indicating warmer than normal pretty much across the board. I can guarantee you, it's not going to be warm across the board. I don't think anyway, given the overall situation here. The month of November looks very warm, especially across the UK and Ireland and into the central portion of Europe here. Into the month of uh, December, very warm. January, very warm. So certainly the CFS V2 is indicating a very warm winter to come across the European continent, including the UK and Ireland here. My problem that I've got is that the warm the, the, the water temperatures are still very, very warm across the North Atlantic. And that to me would indicate that on the grand scheme of things, based on the very warm year that we've had so far, the likelihood is that we will continue to see warmer than normal temperatures on into the rest of autumn, possibly into the early portion of the winter season. That being said, however, that quite often these long-term warm spells eventually do flip around and, of course, getting pinpointing the kind of flip around to cold than normal. Certainly in, in the month of September, things have changed. And I do believe that that is strongly linked to the tropical activity increasing over the Atlantic, transferring heat from the low latitudes to the high latitudes. And then, therefore, that buildup of warmth and high pressure up over Greenland forcing colder south into Europe here. So we have seen a significant change between June through August versus September. And um, it's gonna be it's gonna be worth uh, keep a, keeping a close eye on, on things as we go forward here. But certainly you can see that swathe of cool and normal waters surrounding parts of Nova Scotia into the St. Lawrence uh, 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 River Valley here off uh, off Newfoundland as well and the reason for that of course is the passage of Hurricane Fiona and Hex X Hurricane Fiona here. I will do I will try to have a, a tropical outlook uh, possibly later on today because of course we've got major hurricane Ian that is looking likely to make a landfall somewhere just slightly south of the Tampa Bay area. I'm going to try and do a, a video um, talking about that, also talking about uh, the the global tropical activity uh, at this moment in time as well. Certainly plenty of things to look at, so certainly keep it right here on my YouTube channel. I appreciate you watching it, appreciate the comments. Please like, please share, and if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell for the latest notifications of each upload. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Bye for now.